Good Wednesday, kind people. I've been painting stuff and making bases. Here is one of the things I've been painting. So, for the long-term followers, you know all about my Imperial Guard army that I'm uh, selling. I already have a buyer lined up. But it needed a couple of new HQs, so I've been painting a couple of new HQs. Little history on the army. I painted it originally four years ago. That's right, I got some... A thing came up on my Facebook saying, Hey, did you know that four years ago you posted this? And there was a picture of the very first test model for that army. Yeah, four years old, that army. Time flies. So, there's a significant difference in uh, painting standard between the rest of the infantry models in the army and the new HQs that I'm painting. Um, quite, it's night and day, quite frankly. But this is one of them. This is the Primaris Psyker. I went with a kind of classic colour scheme. You've seen the coat before, but I've done the rest of him now. The sculpt has been... well, not the sculpt. There's nothing wrong with the sculpt. The sculpt is fine. The cast on the model is not great, but it's kind of par, the co par for the course for a, what, circa 2003-ish um, metal miniature from Games Workshop. There were a few areas which were a little bit smush, but for the most part, you can't tell. So, I had a bit of a time point in this that took me a long time to get the green right. Um, and also the purple. You can't tell, that's not straight Nagaroth purple or anything, that's actually had to have a few glazes of red put over it in order to make it be more in sync with the coat. It's It's been a whole back and forth on this model. A lot. But now, he is done. He is ready to be played with. I went with a glowing psychic energy filling up the force weapon effect. Don't know if it completely... Uh, if you, if you completely buy it, but that's what I went with. Trying something new out. I tried a lot of new things out on this model while I was painting it. So yeah, that's the Primaris Psyker. He's complete. I need to go over the base rim one more time because the rest of the bases in the army are done in uh, VMA pale blue-grey. So I need to match that and some of it's worn off in some areas. This is just straight up Valhalla and Blizzard on his base. He takes up so much room on the base, physically, that there's not a lot of room to actually do much interesting without having him stand on top of something above the snow. And I didn't want to do that because then uh, he would be a bit too impressive considering that he's, what, something like a 40 point model or something? He's not supposed to be the centerpiece, This, but the actual commander I painted four years ago and isn't great. Uh, very much tabletop standard I did with the rest of the infantry. Um, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if you know rather use this guy as the com the actual commander, or the other guy that I'm painting. Who is? Da da here, Lord Plastic Lord Commissar. Not as much done on this one. Um, the coat's pretty much done. Mostly done uh, just loaded brush technique for doing the highlights. I originally tried painting this guy once before, and decided to strip him and repaint him because. I wasn't liking how he was turning out. Um, There's a bit of a weird greasy effect going on. That'll be fixed with the varnish. But yeah. The coat's come out quite nice. The red's come out quite nice as well. The next step will be painting the face. Uh, painting the pants black. Painting the boots black. Painting this bit here. I can't remember. I was basically going to do it the same colour scheme as the Games Workshop colour scheme. But, you know, same same rough colours but using my methodology. Uh, so I'm going to be f trying to finish him off today or tomorrow. And then the only thing I've got left to paint is a crew member for one of the Sentinels, who I can't find. I've shown him in a previous video. He's got no legs. Well, he's got no feet. He has legs. He's standing at the top of the Sentinel looking with binoculars into the distance. So that's the main thing that I've been painting this week. I also, while I was painting those, had a little bit of a poke at the old Captain Badrock. Hey, remember this guy? Didn't really do much apart from tidy up his collar a little bit with the airbrush. Just put some tape behind here and use the airbrush to smooth out the gradient there because it was 
really, really difficult on this fine cast. It's an old fine cast, not the new kind of fine cast. The one, the old stuff was really porous and um, grainy in finish. So back here on the collar was really bad. So I've used the airbrush to smooth out the gradient on there because I was having an impossible time trying to get a smooth gradient with glazes and the airbrush just you know, made it much easier. I also tried out some true metallic metals on the bow of his gun here. Um, just again, trying out some stuff. Uh, some VMA bright brass on the back there because I got some again. I hadn't had it for years, and I remember it being good, but it's not as good as I remember. It's actually super translucent. I don't remember it being that translucent in the past. Kind of sucks now, to be honest. I'll use it, but probably only through the airbrush. <clears throat> but this is all VMA, uh, VMA black through to VMA steel, then to VMA chrome for the highlights. Up here, then a Agrax Earthshade wash to just make it a little bit more greasy looking. And that's it, that's all, the only new stuff that I've done on this guy. He's you know, a super slow burn project. You know, whenever I feel a bit of inspiration to do something on him, I do. And the rest of my time has been spent finishing my Orc Kill Team. Now the only thing I needed to do to finish them was make bases. And I had to make 13 bases. I actually ended up making 14, in fact. Where's the other one gone? It's knocking about somewhere. Here we go. This is one of the bases I made. This is one of the spares on a 32mm. You can see it, regular GW base. Just a bunch of plastic card and stuff on it. Um, I've got a full tutorial coming on the bases that will be separate from the Orca Kill Team uh, video. There'll just be a time lapse in the Orca Kill Team video of me making all these bases. Um, but the actual tutorial will go in depth. It will show me, you know, shaping all of the plastic card. Uh, applying all the sand, etc, 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 painting, painting, painting. Um, that will probably be a, should, might be a 10 minute video. It shouldn't be much longer than 10 minutes. So yeah, this is, this was spare. Um, you yeah, know, I might make another boy in the future or something for the kill team and stick him on it. You yeah, know, I've got one knocking about now. But, yeah, here is the boss knob on his base, all nice and finished. I didn't use any pigments around the feet yet. I might later, but I didn't want to do it just now. Um, I only glued them on the other night. So this is the boss knob on his base, who's my, comp who's my demolitions specialist, because he's got that scorcher, and that scorcher is nasty. And the this one I'm quite chuffed with, the mech boy, the spanner, with his custom Mega Blaster. I'd done a matte coat on him, but I went back with some gloss varnish to hit up some of the metallics on this guy, especially all of the copper areas and everyone, just so they're nice and shinier, because they'd gone really, really dull with the matte coat. And I don't mind that on the silver metallics, but on the coppers, it looked really, really odd. It just kind of looked like a really crap orange. So this is his base. None of the bases were specifically made for any specific way, I just kind of made them at random and then just tried to fit people onto them. So yeah, the spanner gets all of this mangled, corrugated, roofing type stuff on his base. Again, you'll see me make all of this in the time lapse. But it is just plastic card. And a few little bits from a bits box, that's from a Goliath rock grinder. So yeah, that's Spanner, the old looter on his base now. You may have seen pictures of my, on my Instagram of the halfway point of this, which is where all the rust is done. This is after all of the chipping effects are done and the dust sand effects are done. So yeah, my orc kill team is now complete and game ready. Uh, which will be just in time for when one of my friends comes over so we can play. I can play as Death Guard and lose horribly, probably, because they're Death Guard and I've got very little that can really kill them. So yeah, I'm quite chuffed with these. They go, they overhang the bases quite a bit. But 
I like to kind of disguise the roundness of the bases as much as possible, but also I leave enough of a lip that they can butt up against someone else's bases, assuming that they're not too stacked. Yeah, dead, dead chuffed with how these have turned out. Oh, here's the actual leader. That Forge World Grot. So yeah, this is, that's what I've been mostly doing. Um, I've got this Orc Kill Team video I'll be editing this week, and the Bases video will should go up around the same time. And that's not going to be a patron... Well, it'll be early access on Patreon for like a day. Because I'll probably end up uploading it. You know, late at night while everyone's asleep. And I'll give it a day on Patreon, and then it'll go up the next day. At a scheduled time to be determined. Um, yeah, I'll be doing the Orc Kilting video editing this week, and the Bases video editing as well. I'm going to be starting on the Shock Jump Dragster as soon as I finish that Commissar and the Sentinel Pilot. So, it'll be soon. You know, I've kind of started priming bits of them. It's just, you know, if I've got primer left over in the airbrush, I use it to prime stuff. No point wasting it. And then the Shock Jump Dragster. I was going to do it in a camo scheme, but I've decided against that. Because I thought of something that I wanted to do, and it was so cool that I can't not do it. And that is that the Shock Jump Dragster has a flux capacitor in it. It's in one, it's on one of the bits. It's on, behind the driver, there is a flux capacitor. It is a nice nod to Back to the Future. And, logically, therefore, I'm going to paint it as a DeLorean. Stainless steel chassis. You know, it allows the flux dispersal to... Uh, do the thing. That line from Back to the Future. And Back to the Future is probably one of my favouritest movies of all time. And Mad Max Fury Road is also one of my favouritest movies of all time. Both of them involve very shiny cars. A DeLorean from Back to the Future and the Razor Cola from Mad Max Fury Road. And only true Mad Max fans will know specifically which car the Razor Cola is. So post below, comment below if you know which car the Razor Cola is, and the story behind it. Be interested to see how many of you lot of Mad Max fans. So yeah, it's going to be um, bare steel slash chrome. It's going to be shiny and chrome, and it's also going to be a time machine. So that's the two things. I'm also going to be putting a red, stro red stripe or two red stripes up the middle. So I'll just use an example. Here it is. All of this hull will be uh, stainless steel. It'll be shiny in chrome anyway. And there'll be probably a double red stripe running up the middle here. Uh, passing probably midpoint of each line will go through this um, area where the air intake is on the supercharger. And yeah, I'll be doing that with tape, and it should come up quite easy and quite nice. And it'll give it, you know, the you know, red ones go faster. It's got a red stripe on it, it's got a go faster stripe on it, it'll be able to go faster. Because the rest of my orcs have got red on them somewhere, uh, they're basically evil sons. And certainly the members of my speedwalk are going to be evil sons. And I am doing a speedwalk, because, um, you know, I like cars, also I don't want to have to paint... 90 orc boys in order to be able to play a game. I'd much rather paint, you know, a dozen bikers and then a bunch of buggies. That's much more fun for me. And that means also I also don't have to make, you know, a hundred of these bases. Because <laughs> these take a while to make and paint. It's probably 45 minutes to an hour each, all in. Um... So, you know, 13 of them, that's about 13 hours. The small ones take just as much time as the big ones. It doesn't really matter how much. The difference between 25 mil and 32 mil in terms of amount of time spent painting them is about the same. So, yeah, it still took a long time to make all of these bases. 
Yeah. 13 hours is the max. It probably only took me about eight. I did. I spent an entire workday working on them, plus a little bit the night before. So yeah, quite quite a lot of uh, time went into making these bases. And normally I would get resin bases for pretty much everything, but the one place that I liked that did good junk bases that I have some of my other models on, but I didn't get enough to be able to do a full army was I think Terrascapes and they don't make bases anymore the guy shut, the guy shut his site down they made some of the best resin bases that I've ever seen and nobody else makes any that are anywhere near as good I had got some of the secret weapons junk bases and they're not as good they're just not not as nice but looking at the Terrascapes ones they're basically made out of like one mil thick plastic card and some uh, old clock uh, watch bits. You can get you can get a big bag of watch bits on eBay. They'd be useful for that. So I figured that I could make my own, and I can. It just takes a long time. So that's what I've been painting. That's what's coming up. What else have I got? I've been sent some new products to review. Um, Redgrass Games sent me some paintbrushes. They're getting into the paintbrush game now. They sent me a two and a two zero. Because apparently these are the only two sizes of paintbrushes that miniature painters use. Um, certainly the only two I, I use. So it's pretty much true, really. Um, I haven't tried them out much. All I know is that the size 2 is a little bit longer than a Rosemary Co. Series 33 size 2. And the 2.0 is a little bit thicker than a Broken Toad size 0. But about the same length. This is all I can tell you at the moment. I don't know how well they paint. I only just They only arrived the other day. And I've not had the opportunity to actually try them out. So that'll be coming up. Um, I've still got some Green Stuff World stuff to go through. Got these rollers that they sent me. Got the factory floor roller and the Celtic roller. I'm, I'm just going to open one of these now, actually. If I can. And they look like this. So this is the Celtic one. You can just kind of make out the print. Now these are going to be going in a giveaway, but I need to do a video on how to on using them and reviewing them first because I don't know if they're any good. I've heard good things, but I haven't tried them out yet. I haven't had the opportunity, but I will soon. I need to get some uh, milliput made up. It's a messy process. I'm going to be trying it out on milliput. I'm going to try it out on green stuff, and I'm going to try it out on. Milliput super fine. Um, and I need to get some more regular milliput soon, so that I can do that. Because so that I can see which material actually works best at retaining the detail from these rollers. So that's the thing that's coming up. I've still got their acrylic wash and ink paint set to go through. I haven't even taken this out of the wrapper yet because I haven't had um, much opportunity to play about with it. I need something to try it out on, and washes need something with a lot of recesses in, so I might prime up some lizard men because these colours will... Basically, what I'm going to try and do is prime up some lizard men in white, or with a zenithal prime, try out all of these on each of them. I've got plenty of lizard men knocking about in the, in the carry case that we're not using, that they're quite old, they've got a lot of mould lines on, which haven't been cleaned up, but they'll be able to show up the uh, different inks quite nicely. So I've got that. I've got, I'm going to be busy. going to be busy with all of these product reviews. Um, and I've also got these, the weathering sticks, review to do. Um, I'm, I'll just save you a short time. I quite like these. Um, it saves you destroying your foam cases if you use them. Blister foam is incredibly hard to get hold of now because Games Workshop's blister packs don't include any foam anymore. So this is actually, you know, not a bad method of getting hold of it. And you just, you know, pull it through when you need more. The only downside is I think the price, they're not particularly cheap. Um, but getting hold of this kind of foam all on its own isn't the easiest thing. You usually have to get it as part of like a big pluck foam case. And to be fair, you do end up with a case at the end of it. 
Uh, do 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 do. What else? Oh, I, I am a patron to um, Big Mac's Workshop, which is a YouTube channel, who do some pretty good YouTube videos. They also make bases, which they sell on eBay. And as I am in the ten dollar tier of their Patreon, I get sent a set of uh, ten bases every month. And uh, yeah, I've got some of these now, knocking about, and I bought some 25 mils as well off them. You know, it's good to support your YouTubers that you like. And I'm going to be trying these out on something that needs 32 mil bases. I haven't decided what yet, but some of the casting quality is pretty good. Some of them seem, I don't know if it was in the cast, but the base edges could do with sanding down. Um, I don't know if I got some miscasts or something sent to me, but the base edges could do some do some sanding down because they're kind of bobbly, as if a bunch of sand or other material got in the mould. So they need a bit of clean up. They're certainly not gonna win you any competitions, but then a resin base never will, because as soon as the judge picks it up and looks, it goes, "Oh, that's a resin base." Not gonna, you're not going to win now. Got to make your own bases. Um, that's pretty much it, I think. I did the colour shift paint video. I told you about this stuff for the night haunts. Oops. Um, this, you can't use this with a paintbrush. I tried. It's basically got a wash-like consistency in terms of transparency. It's incredibly translucent, which is very different to these, the Vallejo ones, which you can actually paint on with a paintbrush because they're actually very, very thick and heavily pigmented. The model colour one is super pigmented and I have to thin it down a lot to use it with an airbrush. And the fluorescent red one is more translucent than this one, but not as translucent as this green one from Green Stuff World. So that's coming up in the Night Haunts video. And I think that's it. Yep. Yes. I think that's it for now. Um, I'm trying to start an Age of Sigmar army. By start, I mean have one to play with Age of Sigmar at all. Um, that's it, I guess. That's the end of that statement. No, I've got, I've got a bunch of old um, lizard men models knocking about. They're actually my partners, but uh, they want a Slanesh army because they've already got a 40k Slanesh army, and they want to, they're going to use that in Age of Sigma instead. And the new fiends are coming out, which look nice. So I've inherited all of the lizard men, so I'm thinking of starting a small thousand points lizard men army that's basically you know two big dinos and some chaff. Um, so expect some lizard men tutorial at some point in the future. Let me know in the comments what kind of thing you'd want to see me paint for lizard men. None of the really big stuff because it's a real pain to do the big things in tutorials. I mean, if you want to see some lizard men infantry, so you know Soros or Skink um, or Temple Guard, those are your th basically your three choices for infantry. Um, or I guess a Cold One Rider. I've got some Cold One Riders. Might do, might use some of them, but they're not in my current army lists. Currently, in my army lists, are basically just Temple Guard and um, Saurus Warriors. Yeah, Skinks are nice, but all of the Skinks are on old 20 mil square bases, and I don't fancy trying to convert them to round bases. Um, so I'd have to buy more Skinks, and I can't really afford to do that at the moment. So yeah, there's a men army. Apparently, I'm starting one. I've also got Zar Zarbag skits are definitely going to be the video for December. The voting is just overwhelmingly in their favour, so I'm looking forward to doing that in December, as well as something else that I will decide closer to the time. It might be another Night Vault, another um, Warband. I might get Magor's Fiends out of the way as well, but no promises. I do what I want, as long as you know the patrons are happy with it. Anyway, that's it. Enough rambling for now. 
and uh, yeah, that's it. Look at these. Look at these lovely orcs. Look at these bases. Aren't they good? Remember how I hated these last week? I don't hate them now. Funny how that works, isn't it? It's a weird old, weird old world. So there we go. Oh, check out my eBay store. I've still got stuff for sale. The link was in the doobly doo. Um, and also there is a link to an Amazon affiliate store that I've got set up now. That'll be in the de the description of every video that I put up now. It will basic. It has different sections for all of the stuff that I use. So if you want to know what gear I'm using, click that link. It'll take you to a big page that's got everything that. I use or recommend in it that you can buy on Amazon. That's kind of the thing. There are some things that you can't buy on Amazon because you just don't, can't get them. For example, Rosemary and Co's uh, brushes. You can't buy them on Amazon. You can only get them direct from the supplier or from some shops. Um, so yeah, there are equivalents that I do recommend, but they're sometimes more expensive. I still fully recommend Rosemary and Co Series 33 brushes, for example. But if you can't get those, then Winter Newton Series 7s are more expensive and a little better. So that's what's on the Amazon thing. Anyway, that's down below as well. Any clicks on there really help me out. Um, and that's about it. Yes. That's it. Uh, you can subscribe up there. Check out my Patreon for painting tutorials and colour guides. Whatever YouTube decides to show up there. And my, check out my social medias over there. That's it for now. Uh, have a good time and paint some models and such like. Bye bye.